press into the fridge for 30 minutes to an hour. Making the ice cream, I use here a higher cup and add 50 grams of full fat yogurt. Next, we'll add 2 to 4 tablespoons of peanut butter. Add some sweetener. You can add honey or stevia if you want to. Mix everything well. Next, I use here my KitchenAid ice cream maker. This one is a bit different to an ice machine. To use the ice cream maker attachment for your heavy duty stand mixer, first place the freezer bowl for the stand mixer in the freezer for about for a minimum of 15 hours. To assemble the ice cream maker attachment on the stand mixer, make sure it's turned off and unplugged. Place the freeze ball on the clamping plate and gently turn it counterclockwise to secure it tightly. Then place the dasher inside the freezing bowl. Lower the motor hat to engage the drive assembly with the dasher. Set the mixer to stir speed and pour the ice cream into the freeze bowl. Mix it for 20 to 30 minutes. Rubber spatula to transfer the ice cream onto the cake. peanuts on top of the ice and put it back to the freezer for 30 minutes for 30 minutes while freezing I'll melt here some 75% dark lint chocolate <laughs> Chocolate cool for five minutes and then start covering the cake. enjoyed this recipe let me know in the comment section below what do you want to see next what can I turn for you into low carb make sure to subscribe for more low carb recipes see you next Saturday same time same place thank you for watching Welcome back to another great vlog video. Today I'm making a special video just for you. You're very welcome. Besides all the great low carb stuff, I love making videos. So this time my boyfriend turned 28. Yeah, I know he's a young one. And I made a special birthday gift for him, which I wanted to share with you guys. I don't know how is it with you, but earlier I just bought a present which he really liked, like Jordans or a nice perfume. You know, I reached a point in my life where when I'm making a present for someone who I love, friends, family, even colleagues, you know, the good colleagues, they get 
everyone gets a special gift. I don't talk about that. It should be expensive. I talk about it comes from the deepest point of my heart. So this video is a what I'm sharing today with you is a very private one. Okay, back to my story. Last year, my boyfriend and I we went on my birthday to the Bayerische Bayerische Hof. This is a high cuisine, super ultimate hotel which has, I don't know how many stars it has, the restaurant, restaurant, it has three restaurants, but the one where we were has, it's atelier. And they cooked everything for me gluten-free, but it wasn't far away from low carb, but it was great. So if you ever have the chance to visit Munich, go there. Definitely can recommend it. So, and this year, um, I was asking him what he just wants for birthday and he just, I don't know, just let's go eat. Yeah, if you would know me, I just don't want to go, I'm not going just eat with you. So if I love you, really, and you're my friend, I always go for you the extra mile, always. So if you ever need me for helping in your house or just going shopping with you, and just carry your bags. Just call me, I'll be there. So, this means friendship for me. Anyways, you don't get the 100% what you ordered. You get the 100% plus my love package on top. Okay, I come now to my story because I wanna share this super video with you. I booked a restaurant and yeah, I thought maybe we'd just enjoy a little bit some wine in the evening so we cannot drive. So I booked a limousine service, a wonderful BMW 7. I don't have a clue about cars, but it should be the... When I had a guy on the phone, he said, Oh, Miss Miner, you know, this is the be one of the best cars we have. It has this and that. And I go like, uh-huh. Yeah. But my super love on top package is now that this car has a TV in the back side where we're sitting. So I just had a view and thought, oh, why not make a video while driving from our place to the restaurant, which is about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes. Ooh, now we're talking. So I've made a video for him, tell him how much I love him, how great he is. And yeah, you know, the video is in German actually, but I translated it ex extra for you because I know where you are from. You're from the US, you're from Singapore, you're from South America, everywhere from the world. So <laughs> I translated it. And all, of course, for the German ones, I'll put maybe a German version in the channel. You know, the great thing is, I love the internet because I asked my whole family, I asked his family, so if everyone made would love to make a short message, like a short birthday message for 10 to 20 seconds. Just send it to me over WhatsApp or Facebook. It's so great. You know, through the internet, you're still connected, which I love. You know, I don't know how is it with you, but all these ideas, you know, I think it's a great idea, but all these ideas just come very last minute. I don't know why. Is it from the universe sense it's like yes I think this video got pretty badass I had to stop sometimes while editing because I had to cry sometimes not like a baby you know I just got some tears and it's like okay I need to stop now because it's very emotional and um, but it's a very nice one you know, it's personal let me present my my video plus a reaction video I filmed it on the way from our place to the car, from the car to the restaurant. I think a bit only of the restaurant, but enjoy. <laughs> If I told you you were beautiful, beautiful. 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 If I told you you were, if I told you you were, if I told you you were beautiful, beautiful. 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 If I told you you 
Did you know that the path of love is full of adventures? The path contains a lot of emotions and events, and we had the chance to enjoy some of the moments together. Thank you for taking me on this adventure. When people ask us how we came together, we just say at work. But the very first moment where I saw you was here. Our journey started on a paintball field. You were the loudest and funniest of all guys. Your self-esteem and courage fascinated me instantly. At the beginning, you loved to keep our love as a secret. I hated it because it made me so nervous. But you showed me to relax and to accept other people's opinions as it is. It's just their opinion. We don't waste our time. We work hard on ourselves every day and truly enjoy our process. Our first milestone was my move into your apartment. You were a bit scary, but in the end, you did overcome this fear. We were in Vegas, your long first flight over the Atlantic Ocean. You are the one and only who ever met my whole family on the whole wild world, which means a lot to me. We were in Turkey and discovered one of the beautifulest blue rivers on earth. I drank my first time red currant wine. I've met one of the loveliest people in the world and had the chance to say goodbye. You've showed me that it's never too late to learn and grow. You've showed me to be open and kind and face your fears. You're generous. You give me inner peace and you have a big heart. We decided to change our path of life. We decided to go other ways than other people do. We've grown on our challenges and I am thankful for the people who accompanied us and those who just had left. Where we are now made us to those people who we are. The grace we've got, the laughter we enjoy, made us see a new and better future for us. We are in the middle of our journey and we don't know what will happen. But what we know for sure is that we will go through that adventure together. We stick together forever. Thank you for making this the best journey of my life. Happy birthday.
Hi, I'm Christine from the Low Carb Planner and welcome my friend to another great recipe. Today we'll make the best low carb pretzels in the world. They are low carb, gluten free and sugar free. And they're super easy to make. It was a fan request. Thank you Dolce Loves Donuts. This recipe is wonderful if you miss bread in your low carb diet, especially pretzels. Now a small side note, if you want me to swap one of your favorite recipes into low carb, please let me know in the comment section below what I can cook for you. Okay, let's stop talking and let's do it. The recipe will be in the description box below or go to lowcarbplanner.com and subscribe to the food letter and I'll send you every week a new recipe. The first thing you need to hear be really quick. You'll need 200 grams of grated cheese, I use here mozzarella, and heat it up in a microwave for 2 minutes until it's fully melted. Next, we'll add 2 eggs and incorporate it into the hot cheese dough. Now comes the magic. I add 1 teaspoon of baking soda into the egg cheese mixture. And you'll see it puffs, but keep stirring. Now we add one at a time almond flour. I use here 200 grams, but most of the times I use between 100 and 150 grams. It should be, shouldn't be too wet because that makes it hard to shake. You can use coconut flour if you want to, but I never use it for this recipe. Now shape it into a long sausage. Then fold one end to one edge, and then the other end to the other edge. If it's too short, try to shape it longer. I know it's not easy, but you need a little bit of practice. This dough makes about four pretzels, or like I do it this time, two pretzels and two buns. If you want to be perfect, you can cut the dough into four perfect sized pieces. But I'm a bit in a rush and prepare this video for you because this is a great recipe. Okay, bake the pretzels on 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is for my US friends 392 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. As you see, they are perfectly puffed and wait until they cool down, then it's easier to cut. One important side note, those pretzels don't taste like cheese at all. So, I hope you like that video. Let me know in the comment section below what I can do for you next time. Please give this video a thumbs up. See you next Saturday, same time, same place. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Christine from the Locker Planner and welcome back my friend. Today I'm going to make something delicious for the week. It's perfect for taking it to a picnic or just as a lunchable for work. So it's a rustique stromboli. Actually I combined the French quiche Lorraine with the Italian stromboli. You can enjoy the rustique stromboli hot or cold. I love cold pizza. I'm one of those cold pizza next day fan. So what about you? Do you like cold pizza? Let me know in the comments below if or if not. And what is your favorite weird food habit? Let me know. I would appreciate it. This recipe is super easy to make. It's low carb, gluten free and of course sugar free. It's super fast to make my friend. Let's start with the filling. First you cut one onion. Then we're gonna heat up a pan, fry those bacon cubes. You can take also bacon stripes and cut it into cubes. I just want that small, smaller chunks. And then add the onions and fry them until everything is caramelized. This takes about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. Next, we gonna make the dough. Add 200 grams of shredded cheese into a bowl and microwave it for two minutes. 
Next we're gonna add two fresh eggs into the cheese and mix it well. This time I'm out of baking powder so <laughs> but it's still working you know you don't have that regular puffy super dough but it tastes as good as without so it's okay add 200 grams of almond flour you can add salt and other seasonings if you want to but I just leave it plain because it's Flavor full. Okay, knead the dough. I go here with my plastic hand gloves. And you see, this dough has a really great consistency. It really reminds me of a dough. This is the perfect amount for shaping it into a pretzel or a pizza. So, yes, this is the best low carb dough I've ever made. Bacon and the onions are, they look pretty good. And next we're gonna roll out the dough and cut it into stripes. I mark my border until where I'm going with the filling and then I'm gonna cut it. we add 200 grams of heavy whipped cream and you can also go with cream cheese which is better <laughs> I think. Add the freshly fried onions and bacon. You don't have to fry them but I love the smoky and sweet flavor. shredded cheese into and mix it well. And then we're gonna top it onto the stromboli and fold it. some cheese again and some tomatoes for garnish. Let's bake it on 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius which is for my US friend, 398 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Subscribe for more healthy recipes for busy peeps. See you next Saturday, same time, same place. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Christina. Welcome, my friend. It's Friday night and I am finishing just my video. So I tried to use my YouTube capture app, but the tone pretty sucks. So I decided to make a voiceover or just a video. And as I said in my last video, I plan to open up my content for you. So to make real time recipes, what we eat during the week. So a few months ago, um, we started with a cheat day to give our metabolism a kickback to that our body falls back into ketose. So, but we think we just lost a bit weight, but not that. So we were happy with it. So we just so we decided to go 
back to 100% low carb and start by 20 grams a day. And this week's video shows you um, how I plan. Planning is pretty important. So we planned our recipes for every day from breakfast to dinner and what we bought and what we ate. So every Sunday I actually sit down and open up my Pinterest and my Pinterest app on my iPad and I start to look and just get some inspiration from breakfast to dinner to sweets. You know I'm a sweet tooth. And so I'm going to plan, ask my boyfriend if he likes that recipe or not. And then I'm going to plan and schedule it. So after that, I could go shopping and then just create something. You know, I could go shopping. What I want to say is, um, and then create something out of it. But um, the way I'm planning this is to keep me focused during a stressy week. So I don't have to think about it. What I have to, what I want to eat tonight, and what I have to cook then. Next, when I plan my meals, we can easily skip days. So when you're not in a mood for a planned meal, so it's pretty easy to change it. No. So for this week, I planned some easy and really great yummy recipes. Uh, so spring started and I decided to add in every meal besides the breakfast salad. I love salad. So honestly, we just changed our morning routine and breakfast really needs to be included that you will see it. Have fun. So welcome back. As I said, I just tried to make a video <laughs> with the YouTube capture app, but I think I just held my hand over the microphone, which was pretty stupid. And then you can see I am planning my our recipes for the week with Cosmo, our pretty cute cat. He is just he loves really to relax on his spot. So it's just really easy to plan your week, you know, you get a lot of inspiration. If you just type in low carb recipes, dinner or um, lunch. So I just planned like tomato mozzarella for lunch or green bean feta salad or chicken salad is a pretty easy recipes because you don't have that much time or I we don't have that much time and I don't want to invest so much time in the kitchen so it needs to be my recipes or our recipes needs to be really quick and super yummy so cheeseburger salad is one of my recipes which I definitely have to try here we have some great pepperoni pizza chicken bake or like stuffed chicken spinach this was one of the greatest recipes i had for i don't know dinner um filled paprikas or crab cakes i need to make them pretty soon because i i did not have that much time but they pretty seem amazing when i saw them just uh, on pinterest so i just wrote everything down and those are my shopping items i bought mini prawns i bought some minced meat um also some chicken for the salad or for the stuffed chicken besides vegetables we got cheese a lot of cheese i like to make the roll-ups i love salad i'm a salad addictee spinach which is a main ingredient which we love cheese feta cheese some tomato sauce yeah milk of course for my boyfriend's coffee and mayo so welcome to the first recipe this will be a tomato arugula salad i'm so addicted to arugula i don't know why i love that nutty flavor so you definitely have to take some sweet small tomatoes i don't know i don't like those bigger ones I think I never had some great bigger ones. I really love them sweet. So tomatoes have to be sweet. So just chop them into half or into thin slices. It's up to you, however you like them. Have you ever tried, besides the red ones, to take some yellow ones or orange ones? Because, I don't know, I think they taste the same or 
maybe sweeter but I think they look I love a colorful salad salad has to be really fun or food definitely has to be really fun you know it should look great because you enjoy it so you have to give your body some great meals Next, I'm just peeling some yummy Gran Padano cheese. I, I don't know how to <laughs> spell it, but it's just Italian. Parmigiano cheese, now I have it. It's really a great cheese. I just take a regular peeler, I don't know which you use regularly for cucumbers, but I use it for cheese and even for chocolate, but I just <laughs> make sure to clean it before I use chocolate. You just take some yummy delicious walnut vinegar or whatever you love vinegar and some good olive oil that's it that's all the magic and salt and pepper seasoning and maybe oregano if you have <laughs> the next recipe is the chicken pepperoni pizza bake i thought when i saw that recipe I should take some bigger pieces, but yeah, when I just bought that chicken, I thought it might be the right size, but it's okay. You know, I just cook for two, so I had something like, yeah, 500 grams, um, 500 grams of, ch uh, of chicken, and you don't need that much tomato sauce, it's just, I don't know, not much, like three to five um, tablespoons of tomato sauce which you really need so just only a bit top it and spread it evenly not too much and then you just need bigger pieces of pepperonis when I saw the recipes <laughs> the chicken piece was bigger than my pepperonis but yeah this time it's just um, changed you know that the chicken is smaller than my pepperoni slices so I just uh, I just wrap it around, which is, by the way, a really great recipe. Took some pepperonis and just wrap it around. Actually, the recipe which I had from, I think, Low Carb Yum, she's a really talented low carb blogger. She had that recipe on her board uh, that the chicken piece is bigger and you just top some cheese and some tomato sauce and then after that you put your pepperonis on top but yeah uh, my sizes I just changed them so but it's the same taste so next will be I just cut some mini mozzarella into half and just top them that it's going to melt and there you got your wonderful Chicken pepperoni pizza pieces, mini pizza. Bake them for 20 to 30 minutes on 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is in the US 398 degrees. And then they will be ready. It's up to you. So I just made some salad arugula with some bacon and the rest of the mozzarella. Just a little bit of vinegar and oil, and that's it. That's a wonderful dish. So this is a super super quick dish. I used the rest of my tomato sauce, the Napolitana, I don't know, yeah, the tomato sauce. And just heat it up and I always love to add some water. I don't know why, I think it's my blueprint because my mother did it and my cousin does it. And then I just use already pre-cooked mini meatballs. Just look that they don't have that much carbs, net carbs, and then just add them into your tomato sauce. <laughs> so here comes now my super trick. I can choose between some gorgonzola cheese, which is a strong cheese, and my boyfriend really hates it, or mozzarella. But I tell you a secret. So I just slice some gorgonzola, just put it on the bottom of my bowl and then just top the tomato sauce after it it's after it's done so i think the tomato sauce is already heating up and then just top your tomato sauce and your meatballs on top just let it sit for i don't know one minute and then just stir it you get get so a creamy 
strong sauce. It's so good. And then if you want it, you can top some great mozzarella. And because as I'm such a fan of arugula, I have to top arugula everywhere. I also made a picture on in Instagram. Yes, because I have to be social. Okay, this, this time it's on Snapchat and it's on Instagram. Snapchat, I'm not that super active, but I try to be super active. If you're on Snapchat, just add me. I would love to have some friends, some more friends. My name is Low Carb Planner. Just special, I just write it down for you. This will be another great dinner. You can have that also for lunch if you want to. This will be my stuffed chicken. I tried to film every recipe, but it's pretty hard, you know, when you work. <laughs> because I don't have that much. Soon I will be in, the, in a new office and then I can make some new recipes because I have to prepare them in time. So, when I prepare chicken, I always take a paper towel, just uh, drain the chicken before and then just dry it up. I don't know why my mother did it, so I do it too. She thinks this is, might be a cleaner way to handle chicken. So next step yeah. will be we schaffst, just so cut some pockets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. not a yeah. butcher, but I try my best to cut yeah. them in a perfectly yeah. way. Yeah, in a better way, not perfectly way. But just yeah. try to cut that piece where it's really thick into half and then you get a pocket. So next step would be you just take some great feta cheese. You can take whatever you want for cheese, but I love feta cheese because it's not that super melty. It doesn't taste so greasy, you know. Feta cheese is kind of dry and it stays in its shape. I don't know. I hope you know what I mean. But I really like that Greek cheese. It's really good. It has a great texture and yeah you can buy some different uh, green cheese some with have a some goat cheese which it has a stronger taste but this one is a milder one so then I'll take some spinach and just I just trim off the end okay, just, yeah kind of too long and because I just cook for two, we just make three pieces, which is about 500 grams of meat and, yeah, and a bit of cheese and some fresh spinach. You can take also cooked spinach if you want to. I don't, I don't suggest um, frozen spinach. And then just put it in the microwave and heat it up. It depends on your oven, but I think with fresh spinach, it would taste much better. I don't know. Fresh spinach has a other taste, in my opinion, than just the shredded, cooked, refrigerated one. As a next step, I'll take a um, special lasagna, my lasagna bowl. Just place my pe pieces there. I just place my because chicken there, and now I just season it with salt, some spicy paprika powder, and pepper. You can put it whatever you want, like oregano or thyme. It's up to you. But I just keep it pretty simple. You know, those are the first ones which are in my. I don't know. And put some good olive oil on top. And that's pretty simple. So it's a really simple dish. Or <laughs> I just add to every meal, like lunch and dinner, salad. So this is pretty, pretty simple. You know, I just added some onions. I got some arugula. I got some lettuce, feta cheese, and mozzarella balls. And of course, paprikas. Yellow ones. 
So it's a super pretty dish. And there you go, you get the chicken. After 20 minutes, it looks like this on 200 degrees, Fahrenheit, uh, 200 degrees Celsius, which is in the US, 398 degrees Fahrenheit. And then just add some scoops of salad and there you go. You have your wonderful super spring dinner recipe. So before I end this video, this is our lunch. This is our lunch. We did not prepare it by ourselves. We just went to a mini store and had some chicken and a little bit of barbecue. Yes. We had sausages and some cheese. Not much. Toby was a little bit sick, so he stayed at home. And of course, like I said, salad. Yes. I'm really addicted to salad, but let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of those recipes of that remaining week? Of that week? So, I hope you liked that video. I hope you liked my recipes. It was just, I don't know, kind of hard. Because when I just prepare one recipe a week it's not that hard because I can prepare the text and everything is, you know, in, a, in a special structure but this time it was just like oh my god I okay I need to make, take a break and then I just cook and prepare because it's getting dark and then it will be dinner time and then yeah everything has to be ready so but I hope you like my recipes looking forward for next week so let me know in the comment section below what would you love to see more of I don't know want to go out for food or whatever so thank you for watching see you next Saturday same time same place Hi, I'm Christine from the Low Curve Planner and welcome to a great new Low Curve Special. Today you get to know three different Low Curve Sushi. I'm no sushi pro, but I'm the pro for Low Curve Foods and I know what is definitely good for you. So you have the choice between fake rice sushi, spicy tuna and no rice just fish sushi. Click on each sushi for the video. Make sure to subscribe and thumb up the videos. Christine from the Low Carb Planner and welcome to my Low Carb Channel. Today we make something great together. I saw this recipe on Pinterest as a regular high carb version, but I turned it into low carb and a gluten free version. So this is a must try to all my chocoholic friends out there. Of course I provide you with the full recipe in the description box below or go to lowcarbplanner.com. Okay, let's do it. For the chewy cake layer we need 200 grams which is 2 cups of almond flour, 2 tablespoons of baking powder, 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder I used here unsweetened, 2 tablespoons of chia seeds for the healthy crunch but you can leave them out if you want to. Add all ingredients into a mixing bowl and mix it with a wire whisk or a spoon. Add one egg and mix it well with a spatula. I've added here 2 tablespoons of oil so it's not too dry. The batter is more like a firm batter so it's not too fluid. Take some mini cake liners and add a scoop of the batter. 
I use here my finger to spread it evenly. This batter is for one big chocolate lasagne or 12 small ones. And bake it on a lower heat, 150 degrees Celsius, which is about 302 degrees Fahrenheit, for 20 minutes. Check it with a toothpick. For the cream we need 200 milliliters of heavy whipped cream which is 6 fluid ounces. I've added a pack of sugar free vanilla pudding which is 2 tablespoons. Then add some sweetener. Separate the cream into half and put the vanilla cream in the fridge. Add to the rest like 3 tablespoons of cocoa powder. If it's too runny for you, you can still add some more cocoa powder. Start with spreading the dark cream on the already cooled cake. And add safely the white cream on top. If we compare it with the real lasagna, the brown cream would be the meat and the light cream would be the yummy bechamel. For a last finish, there's nothing better than unsweetened chocolate chunks. Believe me guys, you will love it. The creamy combo with the chunks. If you like it, please give this video a thumb up and be my word of mouth. I highly appreciate. Are you a fan of lasagna? Let me know if you ever tried this recipe. Or what is your favorite chocolate recipe? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get friends on Facebook, Instagram or Snapchat. Just say hi. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the low carb sushi series. The ingredients will be the same, surimi, shrimps, salmon and for the fake rice we take some cottage cheese. I am not a fan of raw cauliflower but if you can't eat dairy products then please go with the cauliflower. Okay, let's do it. Before placing the cottage cheese I squeeze it out all the liquids with a kitchen towel. Otherwise, we will have a wet sushi and we don't want that, right? So, place some cottage cheese. Don't make too much. I use here my fingers and then spread it with a fork, which is easier. Then add some salmon chunks. My beautiful, cute, cutted stripes just they broke and so they became chunks. Add some fresh, soft avocado. Do you think avocado is a must in your sushi? Okay, and roll the roll. For sealing, we use here some cold water to close. But before cutting, just let it just sit mm -hmm. only for five minutes and my friends, it's ready to serve. Mm -hmm. What a beauty. Uh, Look at this. Okay, let's move on. If you haven't seen our no rice, just fish sushi, just click here. Or if you love spicy tuna, then just click here. By the way, you get all the recipes in the description box below or go to lowcurplanner.com and there is a printable recipe waiting for you. Hi, I'm Christine from the Low Carb Planner and welcome to another great episode of Quick and Yummy. I got a fan request which says, hey Christine, can you make some low carb pizza snack? I love pizza. So yes I can. And today we're gonna make the ultimate pizza ring. It's low carb and gluten free and it's the perfect appetizer. Thanksgiving is coming up, so if you want to surprise your family with this easy and delicious treat, keep watching this video. Make sure to watch this video until the end, because I'll tell you how to get the recipe. Okay, let's do it. You need one cauliflower, I bought a fresh one and cut it into small chunks and then put it into the freezer, so if I want to make pizza, I always have a prepared cauliflower pack in the freezer. Or just watch this video how I prepared a cauliflower crust with bought frozen cauliflower florets. Okay, you need a bowl and hot water. You don't need much, just until all of the cauliflower is covered and leave that for just 5 minutes. For the crust you need 2 eggs and 200 grams which is 2 cups of grated cheese and a bit of tomato sauce like 4 to 5 tablespoons. Take a sip and add your cauliflower chunks. 
just to remove the water. And now we're going to get rid of all liquids. Take a kitchen towel and add a cauliflower and squeeze as hard as you can. If you skip that process, the crust gets soft and yucky. I love my crust crunchy and it's totally worth it. And what we get is a small dry cauliflower ball. Add it back into a clean bowl and add it two eggs and a grated cheese. And mix everything well together. Take a baking pan and add a parchment paper and top your crust. I use here a spoon for spreading, but you can go with your fingers if you want to. Let's pre-bake the crust for 15 minutes on 200 degrees Celsius, which is in the US 398 degrees Fahrenheit. For the ring shape, we cut with a knife three lines in a star form. Top some lovely tomato sauce around it. I want it spicy, so I add some chili flakes and some pepperoni salami. Don't add too much or you can't fold it. Now we fold the inner edge to the outer edge. I use here a spatula to help not to burn my fingers. Top some more cheese if you want to and chili flakes. And bake it again until the cheese has molten. That might be another 10 minutes. And that's simply it my friends. Easy peasy cauliflower squeezy. Give this video a thumb up and let me know what's your favorite recipe. And I try to turn it into low carb. Okay, and like I promised, you get the recipe in the description box below. Or go to lowcarbplanner.com and subscribe to the newsletter. And you get the weekly recipe directly in your inbox. See you next Saturday. Same time, same place. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Christine from the Locker Planner and welcome back. 2016 will be a great year. This time we'll start with something great. Toasted nuts combined with a delicious chocolate cream sealed with cracking chocolate coat. I call it the chocolate caramel hazelnut bomb. I tell you at the end why. If you're a friend of healthy baking treats, then keep watching this video and make sure to watch it until the end to get all the infos to get the free printable recipe. Okay, let's do it. <coughs> Add all ingredients into your bowl or stand mixer. We start with adding ground hazelnut, a pack of baking soda, some sweetener for taste, two eggs, and butter. And mix it up all together until fully incorporated. Now comes the Dutch process. If I don't have any unsweetened chocolates in the house, like here, we are by the way in the vacation house for skiing. Anyways, I use here cocoa and hot water. It's more a thicker sauce. I use here three tablespoons of cocoa and five tablespoons of hot water, not boiling. And add this well smelling cream into your bath. Now fill it up the muffin cups and bake the sweeties for 20 minutes on 170 degrees which is in the US 338 degrees Fahrenheit for my US friends. And check it with a toothpick. While baking enjoy the snowy view out of the kitchen window. It's just snow and wood but I truly enjoy it. Where did you spend your Christmas holidays? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, let's make the cream. We need cream cheese, liquid sweetener, you can also go with honey or stevia, and add cocoa powder. And use unsweetened caramel. I use your Walden Farms. It has a bold and creamy caramel taste, which totally rounds it up. And let's get into piping. I had no piping bag, but I made one out of baking paper. If you need a tutorial, click here. Now we're 
gonna melt some chocolate. This house is so rustique. I love this pan. It's totally cute. Do you like rustique stuff? Or are you more a plain and clean type? Add some unsweetened chocolate. I go here with lint chocolates, 90%. And I use here the oven, which warms the whole house. So this just takes a few minutes. I love this vacation house. I really enjoy the fresh air, the people and the food. And yes, it is possible to live low carb also when you are on vacation. Okay, let's give it a last finish. Use a spoon and top your lovely melted chocolate on top on the cream. Believe me guys, this step makes a difference. We got on the outside a cracking chocolate after it's completely hardened. Then comes the creamy chocolate caramel cream and the toasty nuts. Together it is my chocolate hazelnut bowl, like I said. Okay, and if you like this video, please give it a thumb up and let me know what I should bake next for you. You get the recipe in the description box below or go to lowcarbplanner.com to the blog or just subscribe to the newsletter and get it every Monday direct in your inbox. So I'll see you next Saturday, same time, same place. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Christine from the Low Curve Planner and welcome to my last video of my pumpkin series. If you hadn't watched the others, we've made great pumpkin donuts and chocolate cheese pumpkin truffles. I'll put like always the link in the description box below. I love breakfast and I'm a big fan of pancakes. You just need the following ingredients. 200 grams, which is 2 cups of shredded pumpkins. 2 tablespoons of cinnamon, 2 eggs, and 2 tablespoons of vanilla protein powder. You can add some sweetener, honey or stevia to it. And mix everything well together. I use here a spatula, you can also use a spoon. Next step would be we're going to fry it until it's golden brown. Then we're going to decorate it with some berries and add some wonderful sugar-free pancake syrup. I used here Walden Farms. I hope you liked our new quick fall recipe. What is your favorite meal for breakfast? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get friends on Facebook, Twitter or Snapchat. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Christine from the Locker Planner and welcome to part 2. If you haven't seen how to make cookie bowls, please click here and then come back. To make this wonderful Halloweenish vanilla pudding, you'll need 100 milliliters of milk or heavy whipped cream, a vanilla bean or like I got a vanilla grinder. And bring the milk to boil. Add a good squeeze of sweetener or stevia if you want to. For getting this pudding a texture, you'll need two foils of gelatin. Add it for a few minutes into a bowl with cold water and add it later to your warm, not cooking vanilla milk. To give it a Halloweenish finish, we use the Wharton Food Gel Color Ivory. I use here a toothpick because the colors are very intense. Mix everything well and let it cool down at least for 15 minutes. Use a spoon to fill it up in the cookie bowls and let it rest for another hour. And that's simply it my friends. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up. So see you next Saturday, same time, same place. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Christine from the Locker Planner and welcome to my Bavarian special. We celebrate currently in Munich the Oktoberfest. In 
honor of this great fast, we will make some traditional spread. It's typically eaten with pretzels, but for a low-carb version, we use some vegetables or just regular low-carb bread. My recipes are always gluten-free and lower in carbs. I'll put like always the recipe in the description box below. Okay, let's do it. You'll need 200 grams, which is two cups of camembert cheese. It's a French cheese. If you don't have that, you can take another soft cheese. First, we cut it into smaller chunks and smooth it with a fork. It's better to smooth when the cheese has room temperature. You need to add 20 to 30 grams of butter, which are 3 to 5 tablespoons. For getting a smoother paste, I use here my electric hand mixer. I know traditional Bavarians would mesmerize me, but this is the low carb planner and this show is called Quick and Yummy and Not Take Hours Until Your Arms Hurt. Anyways, to get it smoother and creamy, we'll add 2 teaspoons of Creme Fraiche. It's a full fat yogurt or more cream cheese like. And add one finely cut shallot. I hate big onion chunks in the food, so I don't know. What about you? Do you like big onion chunks? Okay, to give it the traditional orange color, we spice it up with two teaspoons of paprika powder. I've added another teaspoon, but a spicier one. And mix it up all together. To give it a Bavarian taste, we'll add caraway. I know some of you don't like it, so then just leave it out. Yep. That looks like the real Obatsten. Before we serve it, just put it in the fridge for three hours. And that's it my friends. I hope you like this new recipe. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think of German food and, and do you have a German favorite recipe? Let me know. Say hi on Facebook, Snapchat or Instagram. See you next time. I'm Christine from the Low Carb Planner and I warmly welcome you to another great episode of Quick and Yummy. Today we're going to prepare this healthy yummy dish, lasagna rolls. You want to know how? Okay, let's get started. Oh wait, I'll put the free printable in the description below. Okay, cut the zucchinis into thin slices. I used here my vegetable peeler. It's a great tool. You can choose between thin and super thin. Now we're going to take 100 grams of frozen spinach and squeeze all liquids out. Squeeze! Yeah, that looks good. And do the same with the cottage cheese. After your two minute skinny arm workout, the spinach and the cottage cheese should look like this. Take a bowl and add 200 grams of minced meat and one egg. I used my mortar for grinding some herbs, sea salt, pepper and add the spices to the meat mixture. Add the spinach and the cottage cheese and measure it together until it looks like this great filling. Okay, let's roll the rolls. As you can see the filling is not wet so it really sticks in the roll. Take a casserole. Today we keep it plain, just add some tomato sauce. Casseroles will give some sauce and extra flavor. Believe me, it's awesome. And no one will notice that it's healthy. Add the rolls into your casserole and we're going to finish it with some grated cheese. I used some goat cheese to give it a different taste. Try it! Be adventurous! Bake the rolls on a lower heat for 160 degrees for 30 to th 45 minutes. Because you're using raw meat. If you bake it on a higher heat, you got black cheese. After 40 minutes, it looks like this. Om nom 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 nom! I hope you like my new recipe. Don't forget to subscribe. See you on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, and Instagram. Hi, I'm Christine from the Low Curve Planner and welcome back to my channel. Today we make a great and healthy treat 
for your upcoming holidays. Every year we celebrate our winter holidays at my boyfriend's vacation house and celebrate Christmas with eggnog. Of course it wasn't sugar free, but I kept stalking through the internet and finally my friends, here it is. I thought at first it's harder to get the same result without sugar, but friends, we are definitely 100% sugar free and it tastes and looks like regular eggnog. If you are a friend of healthy treats, keep watching this video until the end to get the free printable recipe. Ok, let's do it. You'll need two cups, one is for the egg yolks, one is for the egg whites. Add one bowl for the heavy cream. You'll need 5 eggs and 500 milliliters heavy whip. You need rum and a electric hand mixer. If you want a great arm workout, then please go with a wire whisk. I'm just kidding. First separate the egg whites from the egg yolks because we give this eggnog a great volume. Add a good squeeze of sweetener, round about a quarter of a teaspoon and beat it until it's foamy. You'll see it doubles its volume. And beat the egg whites. Mix the egg whites and the egg yolks together. Now take that bigger bowl and add the heavy cream. You can add some sweetener, honey or stevia, it's up to you. Add some vanilla, I use here my vanilla grinder, but you can also go with fluid extract or artificial ones. As long as it is low carb. Now we add a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. It's a gluten-free all-purpose thickener. You can use it for ice cream, cookies, etc. I use it here for the, for the eggnog to give it a perfect consistency. I want it a little bit thicker. Now combine the egg mixture to the cream. Mix it with a spatula until it's fully incorporated. Now add two shots of your preferred rum. I've made one with more alcohol, but this is the perfect amount for me. So, not too much, I'm not getting dizzy. For filling it up into a bottle, I use here a piping bag and a round tip. If you want to serve it instant, then add it into your punch bowl and let it chill in the refrigerator. And et voila, my friends, happy holidays! If you want to see more of those healthy fight videos, please let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite eggnog recipe. And please don't forget to give this video a thumb up, I highly appreciate. Okay, and like I promised, you'll get the recipe in the description box below. Or go to lowcarplanner.com and subscribe to the newsletter. And you get the weekly recipe every Monday direct in your inbox. Isn't that great? See you next Saturday, same time, same place. Thank you for watching. guys, Christine here. Today we're going to bake a yummy low-carb coconut cake. Let's begin! You'll need the following ingredients. Coconut powder, about 50 grams, 400 grams of almond flour, and only 200 grams of shredded almonds. And of course, we need 5 eggs. Let's begin! First, separate the egg whites from the egg yolks and beat it until they're frothy. Now we're going to mix all dry ingredients. Start with the almond flour and add the shredded coconuts. Add a sugar substitute. And of 
crisp and baking powder. Now we're going to whisk all dry ingredients together. You can add some salt if you want to. Add the egg yolks. And of course a little bit some sugar substitute. Now we're going to add our fold, it's called better fold, uh, the egg whites into the dough and create a fluffy batter. Now we're going to preheat the oven to 200 degrees. Use some spray butter for your pan so it won't stick. And add your cake batter into your pan. As you can see, it has a perfect consistency, not too fluid and not too dry. Now we're going to bake the cake for 15 to 20 minutes. Ta da! Now we're preparing the yummy finish for the cake. I used 200 grams of mascarpone and 50 grams of the coconut powder and some sugar substitute. So cut the cake into two pieces and then we can start. Now we're going to spread the yummy coconut cream cheese. that I love baking or not love baking, love decorating before low carb. I know I don't have so much cupcake or cake video so I'm really really excited showing you this tutorial because I do really love using decorating cakes with a spatula. I also bought the spatula in the US in Vegas <laughs> so I really love the spatula and also using the piping bag. I used some cream uh, and added some vanilla bean into it. And you can, to refine the cake, you can add some shredded coconut and that's it. Mm, yummy. I think I will eat now the cake. I hope you like our new recipe and I hope you will bake it also and send me a picture on hashtag lowcarbplanner. You can send it at me on Twitter, Google Plus or Facebook and see you next time. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll make a marvelous, delicate peanut butter frosting. Take your electric stand mixer. If you don't have one, then just use a hand mixer. Or you can also use a spoon and a bowl, which is a good workout. For this recipe, we'll take 400 grams of cream cheese and we'll add two tablespoons of peanut butter protein whey. I made a lot of frostings and the regular ones, um, the ones with sugar, half sugar. Confection sugar holds the frosting together so you can also use, if you don't want to use protein powder, um, sugar-free vanilla jello powder but we don't have that in Germany so yeah, I know, sad face. Okay, and mix everything well together. We will add one tablespoon delicious peanut butter and sweetener, stevia or honey. It's up to you, whatever you prefer. For the chocolate roses, I've used the rest of the frosting. Just put something aside like, I don't know, five tablespoons or four. And add cocoa powder, it's like three to five tablespoons. Um, yeah, it's up to you how soft or hard you want it. Okay, let's go to the decoration video. Hi, I'm Christine from the Locker Planner. Today we're going to make a yummy in my tummy Christmas cookie recipe. 
I really love that recipe and you definitely have to try that. Make a picture on Instagram and use hashtag low carb planner. I know it's only a few more days until Christmas, but for all who stayed strong, here's my reward for your strength. You need following ingredients, frozen cranberries, 50 grams of butter, 200 grams of almond flour, two eggs, 99% of chocolate and some sugar substitute. First, begin with cutting the cranberries in smaller pieces. I used frozen ones because you don't need 200 grams of them, you just only need a handful which might be around about 10 grams. While cutting the chocolate into smaller pieces, I used a 99% lint dark chocolate. It has a smaller amount of carbs than the regular chocolate. And another great side effect on the dark chocolate is it really melts in your mouth. Add 200 grams of almond flour. Add the melted butter. And stir until it is well combined. Did you know if you don't use any eggs for this dough and add a little bit more butter like 80 grams, you will have a really really soft butter cookie. You have to try that also. Add two eggs and combine it well. As you can see, this is the perfect dough. It's not too wet and it's not too dry. Now comes the Christmas magic. Add some sugar substitute and some grounded cinnamon. Add the chocolates and the cranberries and stir it until it's well combined. As you can see, this dough looks really amazing and it looks so Christmassy. Now I'm gonna show you my super magic. This is how the cookies get perfectly shaped. Use some aluminum foil and place the dough on top. Now we're going to roll it up. And put it into a freezer for one hour or overnight as I do sometimes. Bye bye. Okay, after one hour the dough should look like this. Or you could leave it longer. But I think one hour will be okay. The dough won't be that hard. So it's okay and ready for it to cut. If it's too hard, just leave it out for 10 5 minutes. Now preheat the oven to 200 degrees, which is in the US 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Place the cookies onto your cookie dough sheet. going to bake those cookies now for 8 minutes, not longer, I will show you why. As you can see, after 8 minutes, the cookies are perfectly soft inside and ready to eat. We're done! Here are my lovely looking Xmas cranberry cookies and I hope you like my new recipe. I wish you all happy holidays and see you next time. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Google+, Instagram and don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, hi, I'm Christine from the Low Carb Planner and welcome to our summer special. Today we're going to make ice cream floats. Oh yeah. And because I love you guys, I make you three recipes. Yes, 
three. Isn't that great? Okay, number one. A yummy delight. Icy roasted almond chocolate float. Number two is for my friends who love the summer and freshness of berry. And number three, it's the fancy pansy champagne raspberry float. It's a delight, it's tasty and it's low carb. You guys, it's a healthy version of the regular ones, so this is a summer must try. And if you love it, send me a picture on hashtag low carb planner or write me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, wherever you want to reach me. It's up to you. And I will definitely promote your picture on my next video. So let's begin. Make the ice cream. If you're one of those guys who have no ice machine, then you have to make heavy whipped cream ice cubes and fridge them overnight. Refridge them overnight, sorry. Use a blender and I took 250 milliliters, like I said, and refridge them overnight. Take the other 250 milliliters of heavy whipped cream and add just only a little bit, one at a time. I don't know which consistency you prefer. Is it creamy? Is it harder? Is it liquid? Is it almost liquid? Should it be super hard? So you're the master of your ice cream. For the vanilla ice cream, add some vanilla. I got my vanilla grinder. You can take vanilla extract, whatever you want. And some sugar substitute. For the hot chocolate, we make the Dutch process. It's just cocoa powder and hot water. If you don't like it with water, you can add some heavy whipped cream or milk. And add one or two scoops of your vanilla ice cream. For the finish, I used some heavy whipped cream and I roasted some almonds. And you can top some cocoa powder so it looks pretty. For the berry mix, you take some iced berries. You can take every berries, whatever you like, like strawberries, blueberries. I'll take, I just took a mix because I wanted berry. And if you don't like vanilla ice cream, you can take lemon ice cream. And then add some soda. It's a really sparkling refresher, so it's not like the chocolate float, but it's really, really refreshing. And then top it with some heavy whipped cream, top it with some fresh lemon pieces, and you're done. For the fancy pansy float you need raspberries, two scoops of vanilla ice cream and champagne or sparkling wine. It depends on you, how fancy you are. I hope you liked our three recipes and I hope you subscribed already. I hope we stay in touch on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram and Pinterest I think. Yeah, Pinterest. See you next time.
Hi, I'm Christine from the Low Carb Planner and welcome to another great low carb delight. Today we're going to make some wonderful stromboli. Stromboli is a basically pizza roll. To make it gluten free and low in carbs, we need a cauliflower crust. Let's do it. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 220 degrees Celsius. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and grease it with oil. First we cook one cauliflower, we use here frozen ones, which is about 500 to 700 grams, it's about 17 ounces, and cook it until it's al dente, so it shouldn't be too soft. In a food processor, rise the cauliflower florets. It should be evenly chopped, not pulverized. Place the cauliflower rice in a towel and twist it and squeeze as much moisture as you can. This is very important. The cauliflower rice needs to be dry, otherwise you will end up in a mushy dough and you won't be possible to roll the stromboli. Transfer the cauliflower rice into a mixing bowl and add two eggs and shredded cheese. I used here mozzarella. I did not add salt because the cheese is very salty. Spread the cauliflower mixture onto a light baking sheet and form it into a large rectangle. Place it in the oven and bake it for exactly 10 minutes. No more, no less, 10 minutes. Remove it from the oven and spread tomato sauce over most of the dough and leave about 2 inch, which is 5 centimeters um, of a border on the sides. Spread half of cheese, I use here brie, you can also go with mozzarella if you want to, and add some ham. Don't add too much, I just only took like three or four slices and just cut it into stripes. But if you just add too much, uh, you're not able to close the str stromboli. Okay, with a large spatula or um, like I did, <laughs> I used the parchment paper, you are going to roll the crust into a stromboli shape. When you already close the stromboli, return it back to the oven and just bake it additionally for 12 to 20 minutes. I prefer it really crunchy, that's why I just baked it for 20 minutes. And then wait a few minutes before you slice it and serve it. And that's simply it my friends. I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumb up if you like it. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about Italian food. What is your preferred Italian recipe and I'll try it to turn it into low carb. See you next Saturday, same time, same place. Hey guys, I'm Christine from the Low Curve Planner and today we're going to turn this into that. Oh yeah, skinny tacos and the best. They are gluten free, they are low carb and paleo friendly. It's a double recipe. So you can choose between the salad or the egg tortilla or you can try both You will find the recipe below or up. It depends on which platform this video is, but yeah, you will see it Okay, top some fried crunchy minced meat Add tomatoes and onions and refine it with some fresh herbs And of course some barbecue sauce mm, You can top it with everything everything which is low carb. You don't know what kind of ingredients you can choose or which are low carb or aren't low carb. Have a look on lowcarbplanner.com. I got there a carb chart which tells you this has this amount of carbs and you can eat that. Mmm, nom number two. Top some fried crunchy minced meat tomatoes and onions and refine it with some fresh herbs and some shrimps and of course a delicious sauce <laughs> mm, 
You can also add fried fresh chicken fillets. Just season it with some salt and pepper and a little bit of sriracha sauce and fry it in a pan because we love hot flavor. Add tomatoes and onions and refine it with some fresh herbs and some shrimps and of course a delicious sauce. I hope you liked our new recipe. Just leave me some comments below and let's get friends on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google Plus and Twitter. Did I say Twitter? Yes, I said Twitter. See you next time. from the Loker Planner and we're at my parents house. I will show you today two great salad recipes which you can easily enjoy for work or just like a barbecue like we did. So I'm at my parents house and we're enjoying. I wanted to show you how great the place is. And I want in the garden. Ich komm gleich wieder. And I wanted to show you how great this tiny garden is. Like, you know, buying all that great stuff. <laughs> buying herbs is so expensive, but growing herbs is really art. Wait, I need to turn that. What I was about to say is look at that basil. Here we got green chilies which are not really spicy but maybe a bit zesty. Here we got green tomatoes and a lot of parsley. We got chard and different kinds of zucchinis and here is one which I wanted to show you the eight ball zucchinis. I just only saw them on pictures but I will take one or two home with me and make a video out of it. And here we got wonderful cilantro. Either you hate it or you love it and I will definitely bring some home with me. It was windy, that's why I made a voiceover. I just wanted to show you my parents house, how they live, how we cook together, how we celebrate our stay. And of course I wanted to show you my fabulous mother's cooking. We will have barbecue today. We'll make my mother's great bean salad and of course I will put both recipes in the description box below. Look at those beautiful peppers. Hot and spicy and what a wonderful shape. Have you ever tried detox? My mommy started like a month ago and I think in my opinion it tastes really kind of sour. And oh yes, there it is, the lightly fresh cooked beans. They're kind of al dente, so they're not too soft, neither they are too hard. Just perfect. You can just cook them for 5 to 7 minutes, not longer. And drain the beans under cold water. Okay, we use for the bean salad just sweet small tomatoes and cut them into half. If you want to, you can add some onions. We did it this time, but if you're heading today or tomorrow to work, so maybe you just leave them out. As you can see, those tomatoes aren't from the garden, they are from France, from the supermarket. My mother really loves feta cheese, feta cheese and olives. It could be a Greekish salad, just an own creation. It's just great vegetables. It's not the typical salad as known, but you get some wonderful vegetables, beans. Look at those tomatoes or tomatoes. They're from the garden. My mother loves Spotify and since I showed her she listens to the good old music like Bee Gees and Michael Bublé. Her dressing is made of balsamic, fresh lemon and a bit of water. And the oil is from the feta cheese and of course she added some dried herbs. Can you see?
see that passion there in the kitchen and we're just only making a salad I think not everyone could understand what we say but when we see each other we chuckle every time she loves to add Himalaya salt this is just a regular lettuce salad with thinly sliced cucumber and radish look at her she is cutting it so thinly I always need a slicer a Okay guys, barbecue is almost done. I hope you enjoyed this private blog video. Let me know what you think. Are you a fan of bean salad or what is your favorite salad? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. planner welcome to a great special this year I'm turning 30 years old and that's no reason to be sad about it instead I'm going to celebrate it with all of you and as a special thank you to all my friends I got a gift for you it's an ebook the title of this book is my cake doesn't make you fat and it contains the 30 best recipes which I produced this year. Like my super easy cake recipes, my most favorite delight, the strawberry cake. The one and only French pizza, the tasty tarte flambe, tasty burger recipes and easy peasy pizza recipes. And because that's not all, because I love you guys, we've added a great feature to the ebook. Get your iPad or your smartphone and go directly to the kitchen and get cooking. We've added video content, so if you're a fan of watching videos while you're cooking, then this ebook is just right for you. And last but not least, I give you additional to the ebook and to the video recipes, the ultimate cake recipe. It's inspired by a fan request. It's the creamy holiness. It's the triple chocolate maniac. In other words, it is the one and only cheesecake coated with a nutty crust and garnished with the best topping ever. Keep watching this video if you're a fan of chocolate and definitely want this recipe. Okay, let's do this. This cake makes about 8 to 10 pieces. At first, we preheat the oven to 150 degrees, which is in the US 302 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll start with the crust. We need 200 grams of almonds and 150 grams of shredded coconuts. We'll add two eggs, a pinch of salt and a good squeeze of sugar substitute. You can also go with honey or stevia if you want to. Okay, now we make a Dutch process. We use here 3 tablespoons of cocoa powder and 8 tablespoons of hot water and give it a good stir. Add it to the dry ingredients. Add 100 grams of melted butter and incorporate well. Grease a baking pan and thinly add your crust. Try to spread it evenly. I use here a tiny glass for shape. Filling, I use here 600 grams, which is 21 ounces of cream cheese, and add 200 grams of sour cream and two eggs. Add sugar substitutes, you can also go with honey or stevia if you want to, and add 100 grams of already melted chocolate. I use here 90% lint chocolate. Lint chocolate, you can go with unsweetened chocolate. Mix everything well together and add it onto your crust. We're 
going to cook and bake the cake together. First we wrap it up with, a, with some aluminum foil so no water will get into the cake. Then we will add the hot water onto the baking pan. And we're gonna bake the cake for 45 minutes to an hour. Let it completely cool down and serve it with some beautiful ganache. And that's simply it my friends. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumb up. See you next Saturday. Same time, same place. Thank you for watching. video because I'm going out for dinner with my boyfriend and I just thought I'll make a video and that hasn't I don't have to look always like perfect you know like not perfect um already dressed up so why not making a video showing how I just put my makeup on and I think that's okay So, um, about low carb, we're going to have buffet for tonight, um, which will be Chinese buffet. Um, no, yeah, Chinese, I think it's Chinese. And it's delicate, I like that place. So we have to put on, I have really to hurry because I don't have that much time for my makeup and I don't know what my hobby thinks that I'm going to film everything. Um, yeah, we will see how he will react. Um, Cause sometimes he just gets annoyed when I do that uh, periscope or um, Snapchat. Like, oh, you're so social. I said yes, but I would love to show followers and friends uh, how we live, and that's what people don't believe that we're eating low carb and yeah okay um, so when you're doing low carb you're also going out so what kind of places are you going to burger stores i know it's different places um i know it's kind of hard in the fr first moment but it's possible um, it is possible you can enjoy your burger without meat, uh, not with uh, meat, without a bun. Yeah, I think it's uh, kind of hard for me because I never did it before uh, putting makeup on and uh, yeah, speak to the camera because I have to focus on one thing. So please forgive me. Um, yeah. Okay. For what other places do you have? Um, we get here an Italian restaurant, which is not far away, it's like only two minutes. And it's pretty nice, really, really nice. I like it. And yeah, they offer pizza, um, but they also have, I just speak for the German ones, you know, uh, but they, most of them order, uh, offer steaks and what else? Um, the fresh Italian food, you know, um, seafood, which is pretty good. I know it's much more expensive than the pizza, but you know, it's much more healthy and you know, it's worth, you know what you eat, you know. So that's why, but tonight we're going for Asian food and I like that place and last year we celebrated my birthday there with all my friends and a big buffet it's pretty nice yes I'm Filipina and we love to go to the buffet but no actually I'm not going that often to the buffet which was pretty sad but it's okay you know to do a lot of the local planners a lot of work um, 
And I love to cook, but I thought this time we're not going to cook. Actually, I've just, you know, like, um, I get my calendar, my weekly food calendar, what I'm going to cook, and I always plan like my videos, what I'm scheduling, and what I'm filming and cooking. You can see it. The light is so bad. Okay, I look in the mirror much better. <laughs> um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so every Saturday and Sunday I am going to bake and cook and film it and then I will release it about a few weeks later. But I have to increase um, my content. Not only with those baking and cooking videos, maybe a vlog, something like, okay, I go out with my boyfriend because it's my regular life. Um, I want to show that it is possible to go out and enjoy life, even with friends. You know, at the first time when I, like, oh my god, two or three years ago, I started low carb. Oh, uh, it was pretty, pretty. Oh. Um, hard for me going out. And I was like, oh, that's so unfair. They can enjoy their pizza. And yeah, I was pretty infantile. Like, oh, that's so mean. I don't want to visit them anymore because they're just looking not after me, but you know, it's not, it's not their job uh, to look after me, what I can eat. You know? So when you're going to Italian or uh, to Indian restaurant or even to McDonald's or Burger King or every other burger store that restaurant that store um, you always will find a possibility and if you're not sure then just try to just keep a package of nuts with you or salamis which I prefer I don't carry that you know because I'm planning um, I have to plan everything when I go out, uh, meet friends, bring something to eat, or I don't know. That's why I love to plan. Um, sometimes it could happen that something went wrong, so not everything is possible, but you have to be so flexible to, um, to look for a plan B. So tonight it's just Tony and me. We will have dinner. Uh, I think he will eat a lot of seafood, which is high in proteins and pretty healthy and good for you. And if you don't like seafood, um, then you can have no noodles, but you have a lot of vegetables. That's why I love buffet. You know, you get a bigger variety than going into a à la carte restaurant. You know where you just order your meal. Depends, you know, I don't know how, is it, how it is in the US or in other countries. Because I see that you're from different countries, not only from Germany. Um, Many are from Asia, Spain, Italy. Uh, where else are you from? Africa? Uh, South America. Can I go on like that? Yeah. Um.